I am Nutrix, the scent guy, and today I'm testing something with you for the first time. I did a video a couple of months ago about how to use the TR09 with Ableton Live. And a lot of questions emerge from that. Uh, there's a question of stereo and mono and all that. I have more information about that. I'll make a video about it very soon. What I want to do today is the other question that a lot of people talked about. I read a lot of forums where people were asking about this. Basically, the question that I want to try myself today is how can I hook up more than one boutique scent from Roland into my Ableton Live? Or it could be any other DAW for that matter. It's the same logic. So how do I use two, three, in my case, four I've got right now the SU02, the TR08, TR09, and the D05. D How do I hook up all of these to Ableton Live so that I can actually record each sound, as many sounds as I can, separately? Now, you know that by default, if I hook one up to the computer, it appears as a sound card. You know, what's coming from the machine is recorded. I only have two inputs, USB inputs on my Mac. So how do I do it? Well, I go to the store and I bring back a USB hub, USB hub for four USB port and a USB three powered. So my first thing I bought was that and cables and cables and cables. Let's hook this up and see how it works. And here's the last one. So I take this one in and this one will be used for the D05. Okay. Let's test this out. I turn the machines on. Everything works except this one. Oh, it does. There's nothing else connected to these device. There's only the USB connected to a powered USB 3 hub that is then connected to my Mac. Okay, so I go into live and I'm gonna go into preferences and I'm go audio, core audio, good. Device, you go TR09. That's the only one it sees. Interesting. Why not the other ones? Hmm. And here, well, that's if I see this, I only see this. Okay, let's go see in the Apple utility that they called MIDI configuration, this thing. Again, I only see one. Here I only see one. If I unconnect, let's just see that. If I unconnect this one, do I see something else? I don't see anything else. Do I need drivers? Oh, I need drivers. Okay. I'll download and install drivers. See you in a sec. I just installed the drivers for the SE02 for the TR08, the D05. I already had the TR09 driver, so I just had to install three new ones. And that's why TR09 was the only one to show up when I tried the first time. So now I just rebooted after install of this. I'm gonna go right into, Q, uh, right into live and I'm gonna open up and see if live now sees the three interfaces. Let's go into Preferences, what do I see now if I go audio, device? I see the 02, the 05, and it's 08. And I have to turn back on 09. Please show up. And the 09 is also here. So I've got 12 input coming from the 08, two inputs from the 05, two from the 02, and 10 from the 09. So if I do a song with these machine, I have, if I just look at these numbers, I've got an amazing amount of separate inputs to play with. So if I can use all of these, 
I can really tweak my sound and mix it and make it come alive because I will have separate information for a lot of these sounds. Maybe not all of them, but most of what I want. Let's say I want to separate my kick, my snare, which is often what I want to do. I might want to put some effects on the hi-hats or uh, some reverb on the clap or whatever. So in these concepts, I would like to have separate tracks. And that's exactly what I was talking about when I talked about how to separate the sounds from the TR-09. If I want to play all of these at the same time, I can't. I cannot select all of them from my DAW. And that's mostly the case for most of the DAWs. You cannot go in and say, I want to select from many different interfaces at the same time. It doesn't support that. So we need to trick it. We need to go into Apple Utility, one that is called MIDI and Audio Configuration. And I see all of my MIDI devices, they're here. If I go into Audio, I've got these separate outputs. And actually, all these inputs are there available for me to work. But what I want, and I, I want to create a combination of all of these into a single interface. I want the computer to see that as one big interface. I'm going to create a plus, and it's um, aggregated peripheral. In this case, this is in French, peripheric agrégé. But in English would be aggregate peripheral or, or aggregate inputs. Click on this one and then you get, okay, you've got that graphic. What I do when I've got my aggregate peripheral, I want to put in all my in interfaces, all my different sounds into it. So I'm going to basically just click on the one I want. I want to use the TR09. I want to use the TR08. I want to use the D05 and the SE02. And I also want to use the... Um, output of the Mac because that's how I'm going to work. I'm going to use the output. So all of these selected, I've got 22, 24, 26, 26 inputs and 10 outs. So it's going to be a big interface. If you do this, I, I don't expect a big problem in timing because they're all built by Roldan, but it could happen that some of the device you look it up when you do this type of approach, they won't have the same uh, latency or the yeah the latency of how much time it takes them to process the information and send the audio information or you might have uh, devices that don't have the same sample rate or that cannot run at the same speed so you could have a problem here in this case they're all by rolling it should all work fine but if you mix and match from different companies you might get into that problem of latency that might not be the same could be also the same with these I don't know and you might have a problem with the sample rate that might be not the same one could be supported. Go back into live. I go back into preferences. And when I see no device, now I've got still what I just created does not appear. So I'm going to have to close and restart live. Okay. And go back here, live preferences. And in live preferences, now I have my aggregated peripheral. Now I've got 24, 26 input, 10 outs. Cool. And I, for the outputs, I choose the same thing. So I need to remember that from 1 to 10, that's the TR09. From 11 to uh, 22, that's the TR08. And from 23 to 26, I'm just going to turn on everything to see how it works. But you know that when you turn them on, you actually take you use more CPU. But for now, that's a test. And they can support 44 or 96. I'm going to stay with 44 because that's a lot of uh, inputs to play at the same time. So let's go back here. And if I start something, do I have any type of input coming in? If I select these things, nothing is... Is there anything synced to this? Am I playing anything here? I have no signal coming in. Okay, when I play on it, I see 25, 26 coming in. So there's there's audio signal 25, 26. If I play here, I've got 23, 24 coming in. So there's signal coming in. Okay, this is working. If I press play here, bring the volume down. I've got 11 to 22 playing right now from the TR. 
And if I press here, I've got, do I have anything? I don't have anything here. I'm going to go pattern one. Okay. So that's it. If I press stop, I'm just going to go plus, plus, plus for more tracks. I don't hear anything. My goodness. Let's hook this up to that. References. Just to be sure that you hear what I'm doing on this. Okay, I've got sound coming into all of these, but it's just out of sync. And this will be too loud, but that's something I have to expect because I didn't mix anything right now. Okay, and it doesn't react. So there's something wrong in the sync. I'm going to MIDI and I'm going to activate. See, the TR09 is activated. And this one, I'm going to activate also the sync and all the machine will have sync in and out to be sure that they actually respond. It'll stop. Oh. I did do something I should not. I think so. What did happen now? I did touch the cable here. hate about these that's the new from the box I didn't use it my cables might be just a little bit loose because that's not a new cable and just because I'm running here you hear the sound coming in I'm actually not using any batteries I'm taking power over this by moving the cable it just went dead and it, everything just went a wire so it means that if you're going to do this, you need to have power coming from the battery or something else because you might just by moving the device, everything will, you know, freeze, which is again, the reason why I don't like this. You know, I prefer to have a power supply like you have on the SE2. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try not to move the cable. Now I just did it again. No move. Sequencer play go here and i'm gonna restart this thing play why don't i have any sounds race into the master master oh master is at zero so the sound is coming in we have all the sounds and they're synced but the time it takes for reaction time here is very, it's too long. It's not something I could play with. You see, it's kind of a too long of a response for the sound to be sent from this, aggregated, and then to this one. So I'm going to actually drop down. I've got an overall of 25 milliseconds of delay. I'm going to go down to 32 see what it does so I'm going to have a max of four milliseconds of delay which is pretty good and I'm going to try it again so yes the time the response time is right on the money so that is good that is a very good it means it can take it now it all depends on how you want to work but this is how you would do it if you want to be able to run many different boutiques in the same session running at the same time and in this case it means you've got different inputs coming from all these devices you can record them separately and then you can create a lot of interesting mixes because you've got control over all as not all the sounds but a lot of the sounds will be separated so you can actually mix them and tweak them and EQ them and process them the way you want. That's it. I hope this is actually useful, guys. This is making so much noise. You, you hear the, you hear the shh. That's the sound of my Mac. Just the shh in the back. You hear that? It is really getting hot. What it's doing right now, it's, 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 
means a lot to him, I guess. In this case, I'm using Roland devices only. So there's kind of a, I guess, a, a, a compatible you know, way of working for all these devices, but mixing and matching different brands should work. The problem you might find is the one device that will have the most latency will actually slow down the other devices. At one point, when you mix and match all these things, you might find that it is not a good answer if you have devices that are slow, you know, computer-wise for the USB interface. And this is how you combine multiple devices for audio interfaces and media interfaces for the Mac. So the audio aggregate is the way to go. Might have some problems, you have to check it out, test it with the gear you have. And if you have anything interesting, write them in the comments, you know, tell us what you did with which device you combined together in the aggregate and how big was your latency. In this case, I can go down to 32 samples. Now it takes a toll on the computer. We hear it, shh, hear the, hear the noise, shh, the background noise. That's the fan from the Mac. So by going that short in samples, yes, it takes a lot of CPU and it drives a lot of the computer at that time. But if you only do this for bouncing once the song and then mixing the computer, then you can bring that number up again, it's going to be fine. You know, it's just that one bounce. When you compose, you don't need to have all these separate sounds. When you compose, you compose. And when you're done and you say, again, I'm bouncing the computer, then I'm going to stop the composing part and then I'm going to go into mixing and editing. Then you go with this for the just bouncing into the computer and then you you turn off the machine and you're in the computer because now you're in mixing, editing, and, and producing the final version. That's it. I hope this helps, guys. Cheers.